Thank you. Um, Are you aware of section 100 of the Commonwealth Constitution? It says, the Commonwealth shall not, by any law or regulation of trade or commerce, abridge the right of a state <laughs> or of the residents therein to the reasonable use of the waters of rivers for conservation or irrigation. Well aware of that, uh, that uh, section. So, so, so you can't take so water from farms? Uh, uh, Sen Senator Robert, yeah, I'm well aware of that section of the Constitution. Uh, um, uh, I think uh, questions on the, the Water Act, if you're referring to that. Well, I'd to like to know to how. The department, you, you, you're the Minister of the Department of the, the Water Act, so that I'm sure they can explain the constitutional authority. What I'd like to know is, is, in addition to that, how, they, how people justify preventing farmers like Louise Burge at Den Deniloquin, Graham Pyle, Chris Brooks, from taking water vital to their crops and livelihood. Well, I, I would I would first say that the, um, the the generally speaking, almost always I think I'll, I'll be corrected, but the actual allocation and, and rights to, to to take a specific amount of water uh, uh, in specific um, climatic conditions is uh, are managed by the states. Uh, the, 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 the licences, the property rights are uh, are enforced at a state uh, level. Um, uh, so it's not really something the Commonwealth does if you just say we, we prevent someone from taking water, but I'm not sure if officials have something to, to add to that. I, I think that's, um, that's right, Minister. Uh, so the, the, the Commonwealth Water Act, uh, as you would know, Senator, and the Basin Plan um, rely on powers, other powers in the Constitution, uh, including um, treaties uh, powers, uh, corporations powers. Um, and in addition to that, there was a referral of powers from the states uh, to enable the, the Commonwealth to administer that legislation. Um, the, the particular interpretation you make of Section 100, I think, uh, without, and I'm not a lawyer, and that'll become very apparent very soon, um, the particular interpretation you make uh, around really goes to uh, uh, property entitlements. Those pro property entitlements around water um, are deemed, created and, and uh, deemed by states under their legislation. Uh, and any water recovery that the Commonwealth makes of water is uh, on the basis of willing sellers uh, and um, on, on uh, just terms. So um, I'm not sure that that addresses your question, but I think uh, for me there's, there's a doubt me, about the gives basis. Gives me better knowledge as to where to go to get the answer. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you then justify flooding and farmers flooding and damaging farmers like Louise, a Burge and her husband through man-made floods? And I think she's been devastated twice, maybe three times. Well, I'd ask if the and they were man-made farmers might have. I, think, I, think I know Miss Burge, uh, um, uh, but I'm not aware of the, the particular circumstances there. Does anyone? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds can talk about this. So. Um, I, I would take uh, um, I suggest that the, the flooding that has occurred in, in recent times, 2016, uh, are not man-made floods. Um, they are natural events that came into, into the Upper Murray. Um, the storages, particularly Hume Dam, was operated in a way to, to manage that flood water. Um, and in fact, the peak outflow from, from the storage was less than the peak inflow. So the extent of flooding was less than it otherwise would have been if the dam was not in place. The reality is, though, the volume of water that came into the system in, in that particular event was much larger than, than the storages could hold. Uh, and once the dams are full, we have no alternative but to pass that water through the system. And to not do so would risk the integrity of the infrastructure, uh, potentially causing far more catastrophic outcomes. Um, so I, I know it has been said a number of times that these floods were man-made, but I, I refute that that's actually the case. OK, that's your view. Thank you. Um, in August, when I was in uh, Daniloquin, I was prevented from entering a forum, supposedly, to listen to, to locals. Um, and I was prevented, prevented from entering after the request of, a, of a, one of the farmers in the area. And I was prevented by an agency acting on behalf, she said, of the Murray-Darling Basin Authority. Why does the Murray-Darling Basin Authority want to be secretive. I mean, I wasn't going to take part in it. I told them that. I was just going to sit up the back, as the farmer said, and just listen. 
Why uh, would that Vic, have been the case? Uh, Vicky Woodburn, General Manager of Murray-Darling Basin Authority. Um, we have the Minister Little Proud set up an independent panel to assess the socio-economic conditions in the basin. Um, as part of that panel, they have an independent secretariat and uh, the terms of reference that Minister Littleproud provided them asked them to consult on their terms of reference. The meeting in Daniloquin was an invite only. The panel members had selected the invite. I was at that meeting uh, taking notes for them, uh, but uh, it was actually the chair and the secret independent secretariat who were talking to you outside the room, not the Murray Island Basin Authority. Thank you for clarifying that. So I was excluded. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Well, that was the not chair lot. of the panel. Not, not, not a lot at all. <laughs> Senator Roberts, I live in Denilton. I also uh, inquired about that meeting and I was informed and I thought it was quite a good decision for the committee, the independent panel, to take that they wanted their in the invitees to be able to speak freely and frankly without um, having, you know, politicians sprouting their opinions or, or sort well, of exactly. taking over. No, so I, I, I also inquired and I also was told that um, they would prefer it if I didn't attend, so I respected that um, position of the panel. And that's your Truly view. I was, I was requested by farmers who were in that meeting and I Senator undertook Roberts, to not speak. Senator Roberts, I think um, uh, could I, we're coming could up also? to lunch. Could this be your last question, please? Sure. Um, would uh, Ms. Ms. Werepik and... and uh, Mr. Reynolds, You'll be back. should you be interested in meeting with some farmers to listen to them and, and to get a better understanding of their needs, and to to explain to explain uh, why they think that the the uh, forests are, are dying down at. Uh... I'd be happy to do that. I spend Thank you. Every other week out in the basin, and uh, <laughs> we speak to people in that region a lot. We've had our local engagement officers okay, speaking we'll... to people about in that very region this week, um, facilitated by some people in the room. In fact, so I'd be delighted. Great. 